If you have your Bible, will you turn to the book of the prophet Isaiah and chapter 35, please. The book of Isaiah and chapter 35. It's a great joy to be with you this evening. I want to thank you for all your fellowship over the last three or four years since uh, COVID. I have never missed a Sunday nor during the week. I remember the text that come to my mind when COVID come. You're not to forsake the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some. And I took that as God's word to me. And I never missed the assembling of ourselves together. And I trusted the Lord for the rest of it. Where other people run fear. But I wouldn't tell other people to do that. I knew at my age, what does it matter when you die at 90 or 100? <laughs> and you know what I learned today? A very amazing thing. I was listening to a preacher today. He says, we sleep a third of our life. I've been sleeping for 30 years. <laughs> it is unbelievable. I couldn't believe it that all that time was good. Good to be with you. Isaiah chapter 35. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them, and the desert shall blossom as the rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it, the excellency of Carmel and Sharon, they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees and say to them that of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap us in heart, the tongue of the dumb shall sing, but in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. The parched ground shall become a pool, and the thirsty land springs of water, and in the habitation of dragons, where each lay shall be grass with reeds and rushes. And an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those. The wayfaring men, though fools, shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Thus reads God's word, and God always blesses the public reading of his precious truth. Let us pray. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy words became unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. I esteem thy word more than my necessary food. Bread of heaven, feed me now and evermore. Thy word is a hammer, that breaketh the rock in pieces, and if our hearts have been hardened through the deceitfulness of sin, we pray that the hammer might break our hearts. Take away the stony heart and give us a heart of flesh, one that's tender and true, and one like our blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thy word is a sword that pierceth between the soul and the spirit, and we pray that the sword may pierce this evening, that it might convict of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, and that they might be able, as the hymn writer says, foul I to the fountain fly. Wash me, Savior, or I die. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanseth us from every stain in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin, therefore being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. We pray that everyone in this meeting this evening might be able to lift their hearts and say, I do believe. I will believe that Jesus died for me, 
that on the cross he shed his blood from sin to set me free. May the Holy Spirit of God brood over this gathering this evening. We pray if perchance there's one soul outside of Christ, that they might cry unto thee for mercy and find the joy of your salvation. We thank you for your high priestly prayer when you prayed for your people, those that uh, God has given them. I want my joy to be in them and their joy to be full. Jesus, thou joy of loving hearts, thou fount of life, thou light of men, from the best bliss this old world imparts, we turn on fill to thee again. Fill us with the love of Christ until our hearts overflow, and that that overflow might reach the needy hearts around it. And we ask it in and through the precious name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The book of Isaiah is one of my favorite books. I really love the book of Isaiah. Now, what I can't do, because all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. I can't have exalted above all the rest, but I just love reading Isaiah. Uh, in chapter 35, he is prophesying. He says, the wilderness and the solitary place shall rejoice, the desert shall blossom with a rose, it shall blossom abundantly, the excellency of Carmel and Sierra, and they shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees, and say to them that of a fearful spirit, Be strong, fear not, your God is coming. Prophecy. Isaiah was the major prophet of the Old Testament. In chapter 1, he prophesied the downfall of not only of Israel, but of Judah. And he warns them. He remonstrates with them because of their sin. And I love the illustrations that he uses in chapter 1. He first of all uh, takes uh, uh, the farmer's annual, if you like, or his journal, and he remonstrates with the people of God. Hear, O heaven, give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knows his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. The very animals know who's good to them. But God's people had forgot the goodness of the eternal God. I hope you haven't forgot the goodness of God that brought you to repentance. I was evacuated during the war, and not the First World War, the Second World War. <laughs> and I was evacuated up to a great uncle. The bombs fell in Londonderry and Messines Park, and I was evacuated to New Building to a great uncle. I never knew there was a war on, actually. But what I couldn't understand, in those days, we had oil cloth on the floor. And some of you wouldn't remember oil cloth on the floor. Uh, it was shined on brass steps and all the rest of it, and this, the scrubbing of the woman and the steps and all the rest of it. But I went into this uh, farmhouse. It was big slabs of some cement pieces on the, on the floor. And there was a fireplace I'd never seen anything like it. It was as white as that form, that small form there. And you could look up the chimney and see the sky. And these big pots, cast iron pots, were on them. Boy, what a time I had. No vacuum cleaners. They had a bosom and they just sweeped everything into the ash pit. But brilliant. And they had a great thing. They had a gramophone with a big, big horn on it and a dog on it. His master's voice. I remember Churchill speaking. And boy, I wasn't allowed to open my mouth when he spoke. They had a battery wireless, a glass battery that was charged every week. And I remember Churchill saying, we will fight them on the land, on the sea, and in the air, and we will never, no, never surrender. <laughs> remember him saying, Signor Mussolini, that cold, black-hearted Italian. He called them all the names of the day. And uh, I listened to that. But what amazed me, my great uncle David had these two buckets, and they were full, there were six cows they had, but they were full of milk, and I don't know what he added to them, but he went down into the field, and uh, he said to me, stand back, and he shouted, suki, 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 and these calves come tearing up the field, and I was nearly knocked off, 
and nearly onto the ground and on the muck, the very animals know who was good to him. And you know, the great Aunt Mary, she, uh, a pot would have held nearly two stone of potatoes. And boy, potatoes were potatoes in those days. Beautiful. And she would have boiled them, and we would have got our dinner and one thing or another. And then she used a thing called a beetle. You modern ladies wouldn't know what a beetle was. Like a block of wood on a shaft. And she mashed all the potatoes and put in the corenda meal. We went out into the garden and she shouted, Chicky, chicky, chicky. The hens were flying from everywhere. Do you know why? They knew their master's crib. They knew how he was good to them. They knew the timing for their food. God has been good to you folk in Monkstown. Never forget the goodness of the eternal. Israel had forgot the goodness of God. Took out a, a, a leaf out of the farmer's journal, but they took out a leaf, a leaf out of the doctor's journal. Listen to this. Why should you be stricken anymore? Why do you revolt more and more? The whole head is sick, the whole heart is faint. From the sole of your feet unto the, unto the, the crown of your head, there is no soundness in it. But wounds and bruises and putrefying sores, they have not been closed, neither bound up with, or mollified with ointment. Your country is left desolate. There was a balm in Gilead. The doctor could have written a prescription. They refused the doctor's order. Their wounds were open before the eternal God. He reckoned, they reckoned the, uh, the wounds to sin. They were an open sore in the sight of a holy and righteous God. And yet there was a remedy for it. They could have been mollified with ointment. There was a balm in Gilead that would have healed the, healed the sin sick soul. There was eye salve that they could have anointed their eyes with eye salve so that they could see. They refused God's prescription, and their sin was open before the eternal God. In my young days, sin it probably was there, but it wasn't open like what it is today. It is flaunted today, and the government allows it, and they pass laws that allow it. Their sin has not been mollified with ointment, nor hid before the eternal God. Leaf out of the farmer's journal, leaf out of the doctor's journal, but a leaf out of the religious journal. Your country is left definite. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifice unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of burnt offering of rams and fat of fed beasts, and I light not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he ghosts. And when you come to appear, appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblation or incenses and abomination unto me. Your unions and your Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with it as iniquity, even your solemn feasts. I am weary of you to bear you. And when you spread forth your hands to pray, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. They were practicing their religious, their sacrifice, the going to the house of God, bringing their oblations, bringing the sacrifices of the sanctuary, and lifting hands before the eternal God. A religion that has in Christ's center, God abhors. Leaf out of the farmer's book, leaf out of the doctor's book, leaf out of the uh, religious book, and even in spite of them, God pleads with them. Listen to what he says to his people. To us, even today, are we cold-hearted or are we warm-hearted? Are we living in the fullness of the Holy Ghost? Are we living a nominal Christian life and experience? Wash you. Make you clean. Put away the evil from your doings. Learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widows. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. And he adds a writer, if you refuse and rebel, 
you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And that's the gospel message. I plead with you if you're in this meeting and you're on sick, come and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. But if you refuse and rebel, judgment's going to fall. And it fell on Israel, and in Judah in particular. And what happened? The sword fell. Jerusalem was sacked. Babylon over, overrun them. And they were carried into Babylon for 70 long years. And, of course, when they were there, the Babylonians said, Come on, sing us a song, you, you Christians from Jerusalem. How can we sing the song in a strange land? And they hung their harps on the willow trees. Have you the song of the soul that's breathing in your heart tonight? Or is your heart on the willow trees? Are you singing the songs of Zion from your heart experience? Why I quote this is this reason. That was filled exactly, literally, and accurately in the land of Israel. But in the darkest hour of Israel, 700 years before the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, Isaiah prophecies again. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and he shall be called Emmanuel, God, with his people. In the darkest hour of Israel, God came and promised the Messiah. What a lovely thought. It's very interesting. Uh, Israel were, were attacked uh, yesterday. The Feast of Tabernacles. What does the Feast of Tabernacles mean? God with his people. During through the wilderness, they go out into the tents. If you're down about the Dead Sea, around about this time, you'll see them building their, their booths with branches and so forth like that. And they light the light that speaks of the, the fire by night that guides them. And, uh, and they uh, eat the bread that speaks of the manna and the drink of the water of libation. And they celebrate God with us. God with his people. What a prophecy. When you go into chapter 9, he prophesies again. And he, go, he goes even further and he says this, Unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, and Everlasting Father. And there are two things in that. Unto us a child is born. His humanity. But unto us a son was given his deity. He was the eternal son that was with the eternal God, with the eternal spirit in the council of eternity. Planning our redemption, actually. In the council of eternity before time ever began. In our, in our sense. That was fulfilled literally and accurately. We see him in his humanity on the Sea of Galilee, and he's in a boat, and he's fast asleep, tired out and weary. And when the boat gets into difficulty and the storm comes and the waves come, he stands in that boat, and he says, Peace, be still. He's the eternal God. And that's the God we worship, and that's the God we love. In chapter 42, he prophesies again, and I love this, he says, Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect and whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit, my Holy Spirit, upon him, and he shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry nor lift up uh, nor cause his voice to be heard in the streets. Listen to this. A bruised reed he would never break. And the smoking fax. He would never put out. He would not quench. He shall not fail, and he didn't, nor be discouraged till he set judgment on the earth, and the eyes shall wait on his law. A bruised reed he would never break. You know, some Christians, they would nearly beat you over the head with a book. That is not your... You are partakers of God's divine nature. If you are born again of the Spirit, you have God's divine nature within you. And you should neither be hard 
nor judgmental, or callous in any sort of form. You should be like the master himself, gentle, Jesus, meek, and mild. Look upon a little child. Pity my simplicity. Are you gentle? Are you gracious? If people are bruised, will you bind them up and heal them? If there's only a flicker, will you go to them again and try to revive the flame in their hearts? Will you pray for them? Will you speak to them of the love of Christ, that he loves them with an everlasting love? When it comes to Isaiah chapter 53, he prophecies again. And these prophets 700 years before it happened. Who hath believed our report, and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? He shall go up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness. When we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He's despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid it as were our faces from him. He's despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. And I never understand this verse, yet it pleased the Lord, to bruise him. He crushed his lovely son between the upper and the nether wheels of the judgment of a holy and righteous God. For you and for me. What a wonderful Savior. He made his grave with the wicked two thieves on the cross, with the rich in his death, Joseph of Aramea too. What a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. Is he your Savior? Do you know him personally? Do you know him in your heart's life? Have you welcomed him? Do you live with him day by day? Does he walk with you and talk with you? Do you in fellowship with him and devotion with him? Or is it only a religious exercise? Do you know him personally? Isaiah chapter 35, he's prophesying again. He says, One day the wilderness and the solitary place shall rejoice, and the desert shall blossom as a rose. It shall blossom. It is happening today. I've been to Israel many, many times. And by poly polythene pipes are great. They've taken uh, my water out of the northern part of the Sea of Galilee, that beautiful fresh water of the Galilean Lake, and they brought it right down through Jericho and right down that hole, almost to the Dead Sea, and into the Judean wilderness. And that side of, the, uh, of Israel that was barren is rejoicing, and the desert shall blossom. I said, what's happening? And when Princess Diana died, what, where do you think they got the flowers? Well, Ben Gurion uh, Airport is only about four and a half miles of London, four and a half hours of London, rather. But that's where they got the flowers, from Israel. And if you go into some of uh, Marks and Spencers, you'll get their celery, uh, their Sharon fruit, their oranges, their lemons, their grapefruit. And it's a brand mark. Uh, it's, a, it's a wonderful, uh, the X-ray of caramel, it's caramel as the band mark. But do you know the interesting, the desert is blossoming the same as caramel and Sharon. Now caramel and Sharon is the most fruitful area in Israel, always was. The desert wasn't. So they're comparing it. Now the wilderness and the solitary places rejoicing, the desert is blossoming as the rose. If I don't need that, it's, I'm happy enough with it. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be when the Son of Man cometh. The sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and took wives of all whom they saw. There was violence on the face of the earth and the thoughts and imaginations of man's mind was only evil continually. What day is that you're living in? Thoughts and intents of man's mind continue. And uh, violence on the earth. I remember... Uh, a girl had been murdered quite near her too. It was sensational. We never had murders in Ireland. 
They had the uh, they had the Met over. They had Scotland Yard over. That never. Do you know it's a common thing, daily, in our country, murder, and nobody bats an eyelid. Only somebody else. Just thinking uh, this morning when I was in my prayer time, there's uh, over a thousand of Palestinian and Israeli people swept into eternity yesterday. And thousands upon thousands, many of them won't have lost eternity. That's the day we're living in. And the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Why do I introduce this sort of thing for the Lord's table? This is only till he come. The coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Prophecy. Then I'm going to go a bit further in Isaiah chapter 35. I want to talk about typology. And it's very, very interesting as well. Now, let me say this. Uh, it's always a, a good thing to get things right before you go any further. I believe that this will be for literary. When? Say to them, men of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a rank and pants. He will say, listen to this, the word then. When? When the Lord comes. And during the millennial reign of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when he sits on King David's royal throne. I love that course. I want to see Israel marching. I want to see the, the promised land. I want to see great Zion. I want to see great Babylon fall. I want to see Jesus reigning on King David's royal throne. Oh, what a day, a wondrous day that will be when Israel comes marching home, and they're marching home today. From every nook and cranny over the world, the Jewish people are returning to the home, and the coming of the Lord draws nigh. I hope nobody in this meeting will be lost, or will miss the call when the trumpet shall sound and the chauffeur horn gives its blast, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and we that are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Don't miss God's salvation, whatever you do. And if you're only a half-hearted Christian, you know we're going to appear at the judgment seat of Christ, the Bema seat, to answer for how we lived. Then, now I want to take it out of its context. And I want to talk about it typical. The eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped, uh, the, the tongue of the dumb shall sing, the lame man shall be in heart, and water shall break out in the desert. Do you know, if you're outside of Christ, you're in absolute darkness. Oh, you might have a good intellect, you might have a good education, but as far as the things of God are concerned, you're in absolute darkness darkness. I have a son who's an epic. Ep 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 uh, he's a Bachelor of Arts. He's a Master of Science. He has a degree in Media Studies. He's a Doctor of Literature. He's a Doctor of Philosophy. I don't know what he hasn't in letters. I always tell him mine's are better. I'm BA, born again. <laughs> MA, marvelously altered. And the wife conferred on me a PhD paper hanger and decorator. <laughs> And uh, I'll take a lot of my degrees to heaven. He won't take his. With all his wisdom, he knows not God. Yet it pleases God, through the foolishness of preaching, to save them that believe. What a gospel we have. And I won't give up praying. Won't. Even though I prayed when his, in his mother's womb, in verse 62 years, my two daughters are saved, gloriously saved, but I still pray for him. When you come into God's salvation, your eyes that were in darkness, the eyes of the blind shall see. But I, I, you know, as a boy, I learned scripture. Of course, we were taught scripture to my dad and mom were great Christians. My granny and granddad were Christians. They taught us the word of God. We memorized chapters, psalms. 
Sometimes my father, I remember I'd give me a 10, 10 cell note for learning the psalm. I mean, more than the 10 cell note around the psalm, but I learned the psalm, you know, and all the rest of it. By rote. It's a pity the young people aren't taught things by rote today. It would stick in their memories. By rote. But you know, there came a day, a day when the word of God became absolutely alive. And my blinded eyes could see. The eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. You see, you could have read the scriptures and heard nothing. I read the scripture every day, and what I do is I try to listen. I'm a good talker, and I will not because part of my job was talking. But I'll tell you, I'm a better listener, believe it or not. I am. I listen to hear the voice of the Spirit of God speaking through the Word of God to my soul and saying in that voice, this is the way, walk ye in it, right through the Scriptures. Yes, the eyes of the blind shall be opened from darkness into life, from being deafness to hearing the voice of God. And there, then, the dumb, the tongue of the dumb shall sing. You know, you might... You mightn't believe it. I was the shyest wee fella ever you could meet. <laughs> but I'll tell you, God loosed my tongue. And it was in the area of singing. A Christian who should have known better took me to a concert one day, and I remember being on the stage. I was 17. I was going to be a star. Boy, oh boy. I had the cordial out, and I was playing the hit tune of my day. Sugar Bush, I love you so, don't you let your mommy know. What a stupid old song. And God spoke to me. John, what are you doing here? And you know, I had neither rest nor peace. I didn't even wait for my supper, and that was a thing. I went up to my own wee home on the water side, and I took every piece of worldly music out of the piano stool, and I put it in the parlor grate and struck a match. I got down on my knees and said, take my voice and let me sing, always only for my king. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless prayer. And I haven't sung the songs of the world since, except maybe John Brown's body lies a moment in the grave for some of the people I worked with, or something like that. And oh boy, he puts a new song. The song of the soul set free. And then he says, you not only were blind, and darkness, now you see, you were not only deaf, you hear the voice of God. You were not only dumb, but you're, you're speaking and singing and psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And then you're deformed. The, then the lame man shall leap us in heart, and the tongue of the dumb shall sing, for in the wilderness shall water break out. You're deformed. Do you know what had my mind when I thought about this? The nursery rhyme at school, there was a crooked man. He walked a crooked mile and found a crooked stick sixpence upon a crooked stile. He bought a crooked cat that, bought a, that caught a crooked mouse. And they all lived together in a crooked little house. That's what the devil will do for your life. Even as a Christian, that's all the devil will ever do for you. He'll twist your life up. He'll, he'll make your life crooked. crooked. I remember with Johnny Cochran, I'm sure some of you may have known him. He was from the double way. He was a the funniest wee man ever I met. He says, some of the Christians, he says, if they swallowed a six-inch nail, they would come out a corkscrew. That's what the devil can do for you. Twist your whole life out of shape and form where God wants to heal and restore. Uh, T.P. O'Connor says, you know, God's salvation is not helping a lame dog over a stile. God's salvation has given the dog a new leg and letting him jump over itself. We're walking and leaping and praising God. What a change, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. The eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped, the dumb man shall sing, uh, the crooked man shall walk and leap and praise God, and the parched ground shall be complete. If you have a Marginal ref reference in your Bible, you'll find it's the burning and shining star. He's talking about a mirage. I remember come up, Mount, uh, coming up to the Sinai wilderness and coming to Mount Sinai, and everything is burning. 
But all of a sudden, you'll see something, or at least you think you see something. It's a trick of light, actually. And you'll see an oasis, and you'll see trees, and you'll see water. And you'll gallop your camels, and your oxen, and your sheep, and everything else. And there's nothing there. That's all the devil offers you, an illusion. But since then, I'm drinking at the streams of living water. What a plentiful supply. Cry out and shout, the inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He has also become myself. Therefore, with joy shall ye what? Draw waters out of the wells of salvation. Drinking and a living. Why do I mention that? We're thanking God at this table, remembering that the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. And you should be thanking him, God, for the great deliverance he's done in your soul. He hath done great things for us. We're all very glad. We should be magnifying the Lord. We should be jumping out of our skin for God's wonderful salvation. Let me finish. Theology. And an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called what? The way of holiness. This table should encourage every child of God here this evening to holiness, to a sanctified life. May the God of peace sanctify you through and through. And I pray, God, that your whole what? Your body with all its appetites, your spirit with all its envy, your soul might be sanctified through and through. Faithful is he who calleth you who also will do. This table should be a sanctifying process for every child of God. We're remembering him until he come. We are thanking him for the great deliverance that has taken us from the bondage of sin and set us free. And we should be inspired to live a holy and gracious life. And I love this, this bit. Uh, I wish I'll learn it all the way of holies. The unclean shall not pass over it, but shall for me. There was the wayfaring man, the fool. And the Hebrew word for fool there is the word imbecile. The simplicity of God's word. Do you know what annoys me sometimes? I'm reading magazines. And they talk about academic theology. Not adjectives wrong. The wayfaring man, though a fool, cannot err therein. I learned any theologies from old farmers that went to their own school from baby infants to the day they left and one teacher. But boy, did they know the Word of God and the theology of God's Word. The wayfaring man, though an embassy, and never despise anybody because of the weakness of their minds, even their schizophrenic. I would spend times with them. And if they get a balance in drugs so well and so good, I would pray with them and talk to them. <laughs> I was asked, I'll tell you a funny thing, and uh, my own fault, I was asked by a minister to go visit a, a boy in a psychiatric ward, and I knew he was in for the wrong reason. He wanted to escape the police, actually. So I knew, but I went in to him, and uh, I said, how's things going? He said, oh, it's a terrible place, he says. And of course, people that have mental and emotional problems and one thing, he says they're in and out and they're in and out and they're up and down and they're up and down, John, I can't even get sleep. And of course, I have a wicked sense of humour. And I started singing, I am a music man. I play the chord, notes and notes and notes and then and notes and then and notes and then. I play the violin, ups and ups and ups and doing and ups and down. He looks at me for a long way. He jumps out of the bed, throws back the duty. He says, get you in there, you'll need more help than I am. <laughs> so that, that was my reward for being in a psychiatric ward. But I never give up on people. Doesn't matter what they've done, doesn't matter how they, if they backslide and go back, I never give up. We have a God down in the human heart, crushed by the tempter, feeling dry, buried that grace can restore. Touched by a loving hand, wakened by kindness. Chords that are broken can vibrate once more. Work with a guy 
and Bolton. He could neither read nor write. He was from Dublin. His wife was a Christian. He trusted Christ as a saviour. Do you know how she taught him how to read and write? From the Bible. From the Bible. She taught the word of God and got him to repeat it. And, 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 uh, do you know he's one of the best preachers today ever you met? Never give up on people. Never give up on what God can do by his transforming grace. You see, it's a way of sanctification. It's a way of simplicity. It's a way of safety. No lion shall be there, nor any raffinous beast Beast shall go up there. All shall not be found there, but the but it's a way of song. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and sadness, gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall be away. The song. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Will you come and join that happy band and on to glory go? Trust Christ as your Savior. And if you're a saint of God, sing your way to heaven. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Prophecy, typology, doctrine. May the Lord bless his word. I apologize. But then you don't know what I left out. <laughs>